domestic dogs and wolves are close relatives. However, despite family ties, their relationship between them is far from friendly. Why can't wolves tolerate dogs? And what makes wolves attack them? And why don't dogs do the same? We will sort out all these issues right now. Subscribe to the channel and don't forget to show this video to your dog. And let's get started. Perhaps someone will express a typical thought. The wolf attacks because it is a predator. It has a developed predatory instinct and all that. However, this is not a complete picture. It does not allow us to understand the true motives. Yes, the wolf is a beast of prey, but there must be good reasons for attacking someone. The dog, in fact, is the same predator, as it belongs to the order of predatory animals. But the dog doesn't allow itself the kind of anarchy that the wolf does. The second popular version of why wolves attack dogs is that the predator is driven by hunger. This is more like the truth. A hungry predator is really capable of reckless actions, especially in winter when there is little food. Choosing between chasing a hare fighting a bear and attacking a dog on a leash, the wolf will choose the latter option. A dog on a chain is an easy prey for him. However, hunger is not the main reason for attacks on the yard keepers. This is just one of the reasons. There is another. Because there are many known cases when wolves attacked dogs but did not touch their flesh. Hence, they were not considered as prey. So what motivates wolves in these situations? Wolves have a territorial range of about 300 miles and a kill range of 30. If we're close to their den and if we're within that radius, then they'll come after us. Why are predators not afraid to approach human habitation in order to realize their insidious intent? The most likely reason for animal logic is that wolves perceive domestic dogs as food competitors that have invaded their territory. The wolf's domain can extend for hundreds of kilometers, and if there are competitors within this vast territory, the wolves will eliminate them. This is fundamentally important for them. Grey predators are very territorial. They will not tolerate strangers on their land. Coyotes, jackals, foxes fall under the hot paw. And domestic dogs, too. For wolves, dogs are like poachers. And the conversation with the poacher is short. Very sorry for the dogs left on a leash. Even a dog walking freely around the yard is not always capable of repelling the wolves. And the dog, which is on a chain, is deprived of the opportunity to resist at all. Well, why don't dogs attack wolves in return? Sometimes they attack, or rather defend themselves. Everyone wants to live. But dogs are simply physically weaker than wolves. They have no chance, except in rare cases. So rare that no one even knows about them. However, there are times when a wolf can make friends with a dog. And we are not fantasizing. We will show it to you right now. Sometimes animals can surprise. For example, in America, a wolf in the truest sense of the word made friends with dogs. This interesting behavior is demonstrated mainly by lone wolves that have lived outside the pack for a long time. This story begins in Juneau, Alaska. In 2003, when an unknown wolf began to appear in the vicinity of the city. The wolf didn't just come, he played with local dogs. At first, the locals decided that he wanted to lure dogs into a trap. But the dogs did not disappear, and the wolf, who was named Romeo, kept coming and playing with them. Time passed, and the fame of the friendly wolf Romeo went around the whole world. By that time, not only dogs could play with him, but, which is already remarkable, even people. The locals trusted the wild wolf so much that they allowed their children to play with it. Very often Romeo came with a black she-wolf, 
either a mother or a couple. She was named Juliet, of course. Maybe Romeo is not a pure Canadian wolf, but a hybrid of a dog and a wolf, so the researchers said. They said that this theory could explain why it doesn't want to communicate with its relatives, but plays with dogs. Romeo became a symbol of the city as well as a symbol of the movement to preserve the Canadian wolves as a species. Romeo came for seven years. Two books were written about him by authors Nick Jans and John Hyde. But in 2009 Romeo disappeared. It soon became clear that he died at the hands of poachers when they took these poachers themselves with photographs of trophies in which the wolf Romeo was identified. In 2010, residents installed a memorial plaque in the city on which it is written, Romeo 2003-2009. The spirit of Juno's friendly black wolf lives on in this wild place. Well, at the end of the video, we will briefly touch upon one more topic, about one dog that dog handlers created, no matter how funny it may sound, especially for hunting puma and jaguar. Stay tuned. We're surrounded by wolves. We're surrounded by wolves. There is a unique breed of dog, Dogo Argentino. Unique because by its characteristics it is a real machine, a very strong and powerful dog and perfectly wielding a stranglehold. If it grabs onto someone, you cannot drag it away, even by the ears. As many as 10 different breeds of dogs were used to create Argentine Mastiff, including the famous Cordoba fighting dog, Dog de Bordeaux, and the Irish Wolfhound. Thus, the Dogo Argentina is not just some ridiculous mixture, but the embodiment of fearlessness, endurance, power, and speed. This begs a completely natural question. Why was such a super dog bred? Dogo Argentino was created specifically for hunting large animals such as puma, jaguar and spectacle bear. This dog was created in such a way that it could not only chase the animal for a long time, but also after the chase enter into a battle with it. That is, the main focus was on strength and endurance. So is the pumped up Dogo Argentina able to cope with a Puma or a Jaguar alone? We are more than sure not. Not every dog can handle a wolf, but here is a big wild cat. Well, what are the chances of Dogo Argentino against it? Yes, the dog is strong, no doubt about it. But alone, it cannot cope with a cat. Considering that the weight of this dog does not exceed 45 kilograms, while both the Puma and the Jaguar weigh almost 100 kilograms. However, videos have been posted on the internet showing Argentine Mastiffs cracking down on Pumas and Jaguars. But these videos are not complete, only part of the whole action is posted. But in fact, in such spectacular confrontations, cats are either simply deprived of their weapons, claws and fangs, or as another option, they are wounded by a shot from a gun. However, if we talk about hunting, then one dog is never let down on a wild cat. And very often two to three dogs die in a fight with a cougar. We will not say anything about the Jaguar at all. This big cat can lay down the whole pack of dogs. But the Jaguar is almost never hunted, because at least 10 dogs need to be launched on it. And it's not a fact that the hunt will be successful. However, today the Puma is no longer hunted. Thank God it was banned. In general, do not believe the staged videos where the Dogo Argentino single-handedly copes with a Puma or a Jaguar. This simply doesn't happen. Such a spectacle can probably only be seen in Indian movies. Dear friends, thank you for watching our channel. Your opinion is very important to us. So if you have any interesting thoughts, be sure to write to us in the comments. And we do not say goodbye, but say see you soon.